So you do you have an update on that? Uh, so yeah, just a quick update on uh, Jordan. He did have uh, Tommy John surgery this morning with Dr. Paletta. Uh, everything went as expected. It was a full UCL construction, so not any of the uh, not any of the uh, repair. It was a full reconstruction, and uh, and it went as expected. Time timetable. I mean, you said you look at me like I'm. I mean, like the timetable. The timetable is the same as it is for any Tommy John surgery a day after. It's on the order of 12 months, but the actual specifics will depend on how everything goes. What's Jordan's morale like after this? Uh, he actually, it's good. It's good. I mean, I think uh, I think you guys talked to him yesterday. He understands. He's you know obviously not happy, but uh, kind of understands it's part of the deal for someone who's pitching for a living. And so he's uh, he's uh, he's putting pretty good spirits and ready to attack rehab. How do you guys monitor, or if that, that's even the right word, how his workload is when he comes back? Um, well, I think the way this will work is that he'll hopefully be coming back kind of late in the year next year. So m workload for the 2020 season will sort of be monitored by the calendar. And then we'll have to sort of see where he is going into 2021. And um, But again, as a relief pitcher, Workload is little defined a little differently than a starter. It's not like a magic number of innings. It's probably more about how many times he goes back to back and all those sorts of things. But we have plenty of time to figure that out. Sometimes when a pitcher goes and gets Tommy John surgery, they end up throwing harder when they come back. That's not really possible for Jordan, is it? It would seem unlikely that the guy with those hearts in the league throws harder, but who knows? <laughs> is, is there any timetable in terms of how, how long he has to sit and let it heal before he can do anything? Um, I, He's in a brace. I actually don't know if the term's a brace. He's, he's, he's basically immobilized for like two weeks. Then he goes into a brace that has like five, de five degrees of flexibility and then 10, then 15 over the course of weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, so yeah, for the next couple weeks, he's basically not doing anything with his arm. And then he slowly walks his way up to bending and moving it and weights and all that. Thank you. With the, uh, with the Hicks news, with the Reyes news, with Martinez now obviously as, as the closer, you think, how do you feel about your, your overall pitching depth where you're at right now and, and how you could add to that potentially if needed? Yeah, I think, I think our depth has certainly taken a hit. I think uh, uh, we got some good news in that Myers and Helsley both are, will both be thrown uh, in Memphis today, so that, that's good. Uh, Gomber's starting to work his way back, so that'll be helpful. Um, but yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, losing Hicks is a big shot to the to the pitching staff, and uh, and we have to figure out how to, you know, backfill for him. The other incident this week was Alex Reyes. Is there any more clarity where he's at now? Um, I'm not sure what what, what you guys showed yesterday. It's probably a, a few starts. That's it's, what most yeah, nothing nothing beyond that that changed. We we had most of what we had we knew yesterday before before Mo was down here. We haven't got anything new new today. So. Mike Birch, or sorry, Mike Schilt today has tried Tommy Edmund in the leadoff role, I assume, maybe to prop, you know, spark a little offense. How much time have you spent in the front office kicking around roster ideas to kind of possibly generate a little more offense? Um, like 24 hours a day? I mean, like, that's what we do, is try to figure out how to get the team going. And in this case, a lot of time spent trying to figure out how to get the offense going. Um, there's only so many options you have at your disposal. Uh, I think getting Tommy out there is is a good one. He's hit the ball hard. He runs fast. He's played well. Give him a shot and see what happens. When you look at Carlos Martinez now as a closer and the potential of possibly doing two innings at a time, uh, can you just talk about your confidence with him suddenly in a very impactful role or again in an impactful role? Yeah, I think I, I think if anything, you could almost say your comments goes up with Carlos when he's in an impactful role. I think he thrives on the adrenaline and the excitement and the the, the the you know big moments so um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how he does but I have no doubt that he'll you know rise to the occasion and do you I'm not trying to put this on on you I've asked Mo and some of the players stuff, but do you look at it as a chance for him to maybe redeem himself and maybe that's my word not yours after not having the shoulder and arm whatever ready to go in sprint training here's a chance for him to be the closer at least to make a pretty big impact I mean, I would argue he was making a pretty big impact pitching the eighth inning of close games. It's not that much different pitching the ninth inning. But, uh, yeah, obviously, the better he pitches, the, uh, the, the better it is for everybody. So hopefully he can uh, finish strong. Like you talked about, you know, joked about 24 hours thinking about offense and tinkering and all that. Is there any you know, internal data or hard hit rates that lead you to believe that the offense could come around here you know, quickly or soon? Um, 
I think, trending well in any ways that's not like results oriented. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, there there are there are, but I, I think the biggest thing is that most everyone in our lineup has a has a career of, of hitting. Like it's it's not like we have a bunch of guys who've never been in the big leagues before that we're hoping hit the way you know our scouts you know think they will or whatever. So um, I think the the the, the biggest. You know, there's not like a single indicator to point to, except that everyone on the, you know, uh, not everyone maybe, but most of the guys are hitting below what their careers look like, what their expectations look like, what our expectations look like, what any reasonable set of expectations look like going into the season. So the assumption is that as people move towards sort of their career norms, that, that that'll get us going. At what, at what point do you sort of stop trusting the regression of the mean type model and try some guys who are maybe in triple A to see if they can they can perform at a higher level. We're close to halfway through the season. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's no magic number. There's not like a, a certain plate appearance or a certain day on the calendar where you decide it's time to make a change. I think sometimes it's based on how guys, you know, in AAA are playing, and they, they force the issue, um, or got how guys up here are playing, they force the issue. Um, but you know. E- you don't want to just keep running out the same thing and hoping that it magically gets better. But at the same time, I don't think you can suddenly say, like, if we thought this player was the best guy to play this position or bat this spot in the order or whatever it is, you know, yesterday and the week before and the month before and two months ago, like, at what point do you change that? You got, there's got to be some real evidence that, that things have changed before you, you bail on it. And obviously we've gotten almost half a season of evidence that our offense is struggling, but we need, you know, well, I guess to add a specific to it, Harrison Bader is really struggling to hit, and he's striking out a lot of all those things. With him, why do you guys feel it's in his best interest and your best interest to continue in playing? Well, he's an elite defensive center fielder and an elite base runner, right? The, the margin of error at the plate for a guy who's elite in a couple other parts of the game is a lot wider than someone who's a, you know, a bat-only defensive yeah. liability in the corners, right? So. Um, there's, there's, there, are, there are ways that Harrison can contribute to the team outside the batter's box that, that keep him valuable sort of regardless of how he's hitting. Obviously, we need him to hit better. We need him to get going. He's been in a slump recently, but that's that he, he provides so much other value that it, it, his calculus is different than you know, someone else on the roster.